Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create an application to showcase your art or some kind of a portfolio or just general content, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering just that in this video. Now, before we get started, one major thing to do is you have to create your free AppGyver account. It is free for those making 10 million in revenue or less. Now, double check the pricing page to verify that. I get a lot of questions on it, so make sure that you're looking there. But again, I made my account. It's free. I've uploaded to Google Play and the Apple App Store. You have to pay their fees, but those are unavoidable, and they're not costs from AppGyver specifically. So jumping straight in, we're going to go ahead and look at this app I have here. So first thing that you need to do is scroll down just a bit on the YouTube page. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and that subscribe button just to let me know you like the content. And then we'll jump straight in. Now, this option is going to be utilizing Firebase for a couple of reasons. First, if you're going to have a very media-intensive app, putting everything in the application itself is going to be... Uh, it's going to make the app very large. So Google Play and um, Apple App Store, uh, both of them have limitations, at least at the time of filming this video, to the application size. So having a ton of high-definition images within the app may not be the best route, especially if you're going to have... Uh, if this application is going to end up being massive, you may not even be able to upload it to the app stores. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with the basics. So we are going to make this a single page application, but you can check out the resources in my YouTube channel if you want to make more, uh, let's just say more dynamic applications with more content. So we'll put check out my art, or we'll put check out this art below exclamation point maybe we want to make this style a little bit different so we can go to layout maybe we want to center this and then we can put some detail here like click any image to zoom and then with this we may want to center this as well so we can go to layout and we will center now, one thing we're going to have to do is get our, <clears throat> our Firebase information set up. So the first thing to do is to set up some kind of a schema, so to speak, to go ahead and get this content and URLs ready. So we have this page here. Um, I will paste this in the description as I typically do. But the idea is we have a URL to get the Firebase information. So if we go over, so we're logging into Firebase and you create a new account, you can go to Firestore Database, and I clicked Start Collection, and it's just called Image Gallery. The document is URL, and then there are fields 1, 2, 3. So when you click Start Collection, the first thing is Image Gallery. The next thing, the collection or the document, I mean, is URL, and then 1, 2, 3. So to access this, you can type in or use this URL, and right here is going to be your, essentially like your account name or project name. So for me, for example, you can see mine right here, just to the right of the text project. And then right here at the very end is the name, which is your collection name, so image gallery. So we're going to copy all of this, and then we will go to data. And we are going to go to Add Resource, and we'll make this really quick because I have other v uh, videos on using the API. So we'll just call this Image Gallery, but you can call it whatever you want. And we can't have spaces, and we'll just put Gallery as the description. So for the first half, we just need everything up to the V1. And then in Get, we paste the remainder. And then down here, we need to put documents for the key path. Now, when we run test, you should get this information here or whatever your information is. And you can click get or set schema from response. So basically what this does is it gives AppGyver a way to pull out this information. So what we're going to do now is add in a couple of images and kind of create the structure for this page. So I'm thinking maybe we want a gallery of four items. So we can start out with, let's just start out with a couple of rows. So we'll have these two rows here. And maybe we want some kind of a divider just to kind of keep things organized. So then we'll drop in image one, image two, 
image three and image four. And then for each of these images, you can use the properties and choose where the information is going to come from. Now I have this image here that I've saved to my device. So this is from unsplash.com. Great resource to find uh, license free pictures. Make sure you're checking the licensing information for the images you're using and try to give a shout out to the people that are actually, you know, creating that content. So um, what I'm going to do is I have my image gallery, my URL, and you'll see URL one here is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload these to Firebase because if the Unsplash image gets taken down or the link gets changed, then it could be broken in your application. So we're going to go over to storage and we'll go to upload file. And then we are going to go to desktop where I have this saved. And you'll see the size. And when I select the image, there is a URL off to the right hand side. So I can copy link address. Now, when we go into this page, you can change the source. So you have two choices. You can input the source and just make it this URL. So you can basically put, if you want to upload it to the actual application, you can click right here. But again, that makes your app a little bit bigger. Option number two is to replace the URL with this URL, which is for your actual item. And then the other option, which we'll use for this one here, is to choose source, and then we'll choose data and variable. And we're going to use the information from Firebase. So we'll choose source, data and variables, data variable, and you'll see there's none available. So what you need to do is make it available on this page. Very simple. Just click add data variable, image gallery, save. So now we will go to the image. We'll choose source. And we will go to data and variables, data variable. And you'll see <clears throat> sometimes it may not have, it may not give you the ability to actually open this. So we have a little bit of a workaround to go to formulas, delete all the content, and you can go to variables. So we want the content from image gallery string value. So you'll see we have created time field field one, one. This is the content of that string. You'll notice it's blank because it was blank in Firebase originally. So we'll just click save and save. So now I want to show you how this is going to work, the two different options we're using. So we're going to go to preview and open app preview and we'll choose this application. <clears throat> so the first image you can see, it's right here. And then we have these two blank images, and then we have nothing. Now, if we want that to update, we can go over to our Firestore database. And this is why I prefer to use the backend database. We can go over here to one and paste in <clears throat> the link. Now we'll go back over here and this image here, you'll see all of a sudden it populates. And that's because we're using that Firestore database storage or that Firestore database, essentially. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to show you how that works in real time. So maybe I decide I'm going to copy the image address for this one and I want it to replace this one. But I don't want to have to publish a new application to all of my users. So what I can do is I can jump over here. I don't want to paste any updates to the application. I just swap out the URL and then we go over here and all of a sudden it updates. So the idea is if you have, <clears throat> if you have a couple of different images that you want people to see, you can go set your formula for the data variable for the string value for each of your URLs. So the idea would be, sorry, we have to delete all of this. So we want this to be the string value for the URL two, and we'll make this one the string value for URL three. Now you should be able to use as many variables as you want. One thing you need to consider when you're making this is, do you need to do any API throttling? And what I mean by that is, I'm using a free Firestore account, a free Firebase account, but you're limited to the amount of reads and writes. So every time a user accesses this page, they could be reading multiple times just by viewing this image here. 
because it's being pulled from the API. So this image itself is stored in Firebase, but the link is being accessed through the API, through that Firestore database. So if it's reading multiple times, then one user that's regularly accessing your, basically your application, could be re, uh, running up that read or write time. So <clears throat> an example, when I was publishing my Tyler Talks app to YouTube, uh, to the Apple App Store, just having a couple of people use the application with no delays or throttling, I ran over my free plan limit within a week or two. So imagine having a ton of users. So long story short, check out the video link in the description if you want to learn about the API throttling. <clears throat> but the idea here is, I have this set up and we're just going to test it to show you what it looks like. So we have image one, which is right here. It's image. Technically, it's this image in cell two. And then we have cell one. So we're going to remove this and we're going to save it and just see what the app looks like right now. <clears throat> so you'll see we have this image and then nothing down here. The reason this is important is if you decided after the fact, I want to paste in a, something here, and I want to paste in something here. When we go back to our page, you'll see those two images update. So what I'm getting at here is if you wanted to have this be gallery one, <clears throat> and then maybe you want a divider and have gallery two, you could easily put a title page in here and we'll call this gallery one. So now you'll have gallery one, your image, and then when you scroll down another image and another image, and then you can start the next gallery and the next gallery or set these up across multiple pages. But the idea here is when you're using this method, and you have an image selected, if it's pulling from a data resource, if there is no URL in that resource, the image and the component do not show up. So the good news for this is, as you can see right here, these two images are here. If you realized after the fact, oh wait, shouldn't have put this image in, and this image shouldn't be there either. When you update it, it'll update in close to real time. So now all of a sudden those images are gone. So if you wanted, you could have a coming soon image and you could post that in Firebase using the method that we just did and then put images there so that users know there's going to be content here eventually. So that's the general idea for this app. So if you wanted, you could put in buttons to send people to different pages. But the idea is you can add your image gallery and you can have tons of different collections and make gallery one, gallery two, gallery three, however you feel is best to set this up. But again, storing it as a data resource means you are going to require internet to view those items, but it does give you the ability to make those updates in close to real time instead of building each one of those images into the application. And again, using this resource, you can copy the steps that I just did for as many pages as you want to have in your application and for as many images as you want. Now, one final thing I want to add in here that may be a cool resource for you is I want to show you the open URL option to allow users to zoom in on these images. So this is image two, and you'll see that it's just the only image that's being shown right now. So what we can do is we can click on add logic, go to the component marketplace, and we can type in web. And then you should see the option to open a web browser. And then you also have basically a couple of different web options. I'll put a link in the description to the various resources I have for this, but there's two options, one to open a web browser and one that opens a modal where you can effectively zoom in. So you'll see that this opens things in a web app uh, or in an appropriate app, but we're just going to use open web browser. So now when you type on the image, we'll click open web browser and we'll connect this to this and then URL to open, we'll make the formula the same thing. So if we go to data variables 
we'll make it the same exact thing. And you'll have to delete those double quotes. So now when you open this, it the behavior is a little different in a web view. But if you click this, you'll see that we now have a new tab where users would be able to zoom in and out. If you're doing this on a mobile device, this would open up in, from what I've seen on the AppGyver forums, the native browser and would look like it's still in your app. You also have the option to, instead of using this, use the web browser that opens up in a modal on that page. So you could pick whichever of the two. Um, I, I'm not sure which one's which. Again, I'll have a link in the description. But the idea here is if you want people to be able to zoom in on these images, allowing those images to be clickable gives them the ability to zoom in and kind of view that content in a larger, uh, in a larger, more uh, zoomed in fashion, I guess is the only way I could put it. So I hope that was useful. Again, I know that this is very basic and plain, but the logic is relatively simple. You can kind of use this to make whatever you see fit. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.